reforms. So the pseudo-social justice and pseudo-rationalism are the two cornerstones of the Davidian movement. When you look at actually the core essentials of the Davidian movement, we may have hatred for them, we may have a aversion for them, but we have to understand them. How is it that this particular movement that has very clear, very naked lies at its core has been able to hypnotize the people of this state? So what was the reason? இப்படி தன் அகத்தில் ஒரு முழுமையான பொய்யை வைத்திருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு உண்மையின்மையை வைத்திருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு இயக்கம் திராவிட இயக்கம் திராவிட இயக்கத்தின் அடிப்படையாக இருக்கக்கூடியவை முழுக்க முழுக்க பொய்கள் ஆனால் இந்த இயக்கம் இத்தனை ஆண்டு காலங்கள் பல தசாப்தங்களாக தமிழ்நாட்டு மக்களை தங்களுடைய பிடிக்குள் வைத்திருக்கிறது அதற்கான காரணம் என்ன என்பதை நாம் சற்று விலகி நின்று ஆராய வேண்டும் நம்முடைய விருப்பு வெறுப்புகளை தள்ளி வைத்து விட்டு அப்செக்டிவாக காமம் செப்பாது கண்டது முடியுமோ என்று சொல்வார்கள் தன்னுடைய உணர்வுகளை சொல்லாமல் உண்மையில் என்ன விஷயம் ஏன் திராவிட இயக்கத்தினால் இப்படி ஒரு வெற்றியை அதனுடைய பொய்மையை தாண்டி உருவாக்க முடிந்திருக்கிறது என்பதை நாம் புரிந்து கொள்ள வேண்டும் ஏனென்றால் நாம் போரிடக்கூடியது நம் முன்னால் இருக்கக்கூடிய திராவிட இயக்கத்தோடு மட்டுமல்ல அந்த திராவிட இயக்கம் என்று நாம் முன்னால் பார்க்கக்கூடிய விஷயத்திற்கு பின்னால் இருக்கக்கூடிய திராவிட இயக்கமோ தமிழ் தேசியமோ எந்த ஒரு பிரிவினைவாதமோ அதற்கு பின்னால் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஏறக்குறைய இருநூறு ஆண்டுகள் பழமை வாய்ந்த காலனிய சக்திகளோடு நாம் போரிட்டுக் கொண்டிருக்கிறோம் த கர்னல் பிஹைண்ட் த கர்னல் பிஹைண்ட் த டிரவிடியன் இன்டர்ஃபேஸ் இஸ் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் இட் இஸ் தி கொலோனியல் எவஞ்சலிக்கல் மிஷினரி not missionary machinery that the complete system that is there it is academic it is in the media it is in the politics it is in the society in the form of activism in the combined structure we are actually fighting against so we have to understand what actually makes it work to understand that we go into in this particular presentation we go into the history of actual rationalism what is rationalism what is the cultural and the historical context of rationalism so we go there can someone change it that will be better actually can you go to the first slide okay so when we talk about rationalism we have to understand we can go to the first slide actually. Uh, when we talk about rationalism i remember a particular article that came in outlook it was written by s yes anand he is supposed to be a intellectual heading the dalit movement he himself was not a dalit and he said that no indian language has a term for rationalism no indian language except tamil because in tamil you have the term pagutharivu and that is because of the dravidian movement so rationalism itself was crafted into the indian culture by the dravidian movement is it true we just go and search for the etymology of the term reason the etymology of the term reason because reason is supposed to be the so called indo european term so etymology of the term reason actually comes from the root word ar which in turn is also the root word for rita so rita and reason are related together very generically so this very statement that reason does not have an indian term is wrong and if you go further you will understand that ar is also related to arivu and aram so you actually have a complete collapse of the origin dravidian theory in terms of linguistics here because you have arivu aram which are supposed to be pure tamil words but they have the so called proto indo european roots so whatever it is so arivu essentially means reason very interestingly i think it was uh, 
1953, Eve Ramasamy has written an article in which he also acknowledges the fact that arivu also means so called pagutarivu but pagutarivu is not re- rationalism rationalism essentially means connecting the cause and the effect Co- connecting the correct cause and the correct effect that is called rationalism so pagutarivu illa adu adu kootarivu appdi nam solra arivu appdi nu sonnale adu da that is a different thing right so you have problem that is the first thing that reason is very much an indian term rationalism is an indian concept that has deep roots and it was not even ramasamy who created this in tamil or indian context but you got to understand that this is the campaign this is the media narrative this is the construct that has been created and in the case of western rationalism most probably we will Uh, consider rene descartes whom you see here a mathematician and a philosopher as the father of rationalism or rather say the father of uh, uh, modern thought process in the western tradition and he was also a person who was a person of uh, dualist notion that the thinking part and the physical part are entirely different the mind and the matter are entirely different they two belong to two different realms they are not related they were united by in human beings for example the thinking uh, thinking aspect and the material aspect have been united by a divine will so this kind of a dualism is also part of the rationalist tradition of the west so this is the western rationalist tradition can you go to the next okay right. now i told you about this binary categories the indian tradition rejects categories indian tradition is for continuum this is very much given to us even to our children in the form of uh, the puranic episode of uh, pragalada and hiranyakashipu what were the boons that hiranyakashipu got that he should not be killed in the morning in the day time he should not be killed in the night time he should not be killed by an animal he should not be killed by a human being he should not be killed by a devata he should not be killed by weapons he should not be killed by hands in all this if you see he was specifying the categories he was specifying the categories he always forgot the continuum between the outside and inside there is a continuum of the door between the day and the night there is the continuum of the santhya time between the weapon and the hands there is the continuum of the nail between an animal and the human form there is a continuum of the transient form he was not able to look into the continuum and that was his greatest mistake and from that comes another great blunder what was that blunder i am your creator i am your father you should worship only me naan unnudaiya karthan naan unnudaiya thagappan ennai thavara unakku veru deivam kedaiyadu that was the basis of hiranya gazibus blunder and this blunder also has another one problem the problem is that it rejects the omnipresence of the divine this is another important aspect of indian culture alone as far as i know you can talk of the divine as the omniscient the divine knows everything you can talk of the divine as the omnipotent the divine is capable of everything that you can see in all the religions throughout the world but to talk of the divine to realize the divine as omnipresent that happens only in the hindu culture in the indian culture that is why hiranyakashipu from his dualism to his monopolistic expansionism monopolistic expansionism is more than monotheism you say in monotheism at least you say there is one god that's all in monopolistic tendency what you say is that there is only one god and that is my god so he was telling i am the creator i am the father i am the god you cannot worship any other god at that particular point of time you have to reject the omnipresence of the god if god is everywhere then you cannot claim a special status to yourself so he was rejecting that so that is why he was asking where was where is your god and he was telling the god the little pragalada was telling the god is there in 
the speck of an atom as well as in this pillar and from the pillar the diffuse form of the divine emerged so this particular aspect is actually shows this puranic thing just think about the greatness of our culture a puranic episode that we tell each and every child every child in this nation grows with it it contains a very strong philosophical spiritual truth encoded in it and that also shows the deficiency of the reductionist rationalism of the west we have the intuitive capacity to understand that are we understanding that it or not is another question but you have been given the equipments the cultural tools you have been given the ability to understand that whether we use it or not is another question so we go to the next uh, slide can we go to the next slide and in india we have developed holistic rationalism from adi sangara to meghandar i am showing two examples from india the third example that i am showing is also very important that is baruch spinoza i go through the textbooks of our schools syllabus i find one thing very interesting they talk about the western industrial revolution they talk about western enlightenment they talk about martin luther they talk about all these things but they never talk about spinoza where spinoza is the basis of true western renaissance and he was an advaiti baruch spinoza was an advaiti and he was the person whom albert einstein quoted unfortunately our textbooks don't talk about it i sincerely ask the people here who are the decision making authority who will be decision making authorities who have influence in the decision making authority to include baruch spinoza here and we start with uh, adi shankara adi shankara very clearly states that when he is talking about the maya nirupana in viveka chudamani he very very beautifully says that maya is the basis of the apparent the universe that we see and it is not something to be despised it is something to be studied it is the web of the causal relations and it is by studying this web of the causal relations that you can actually understand the nature of brahman so maya is not illusion that is something that we have to understand maya is not illusion avyakta namni that is the term that adi sankara uses for maya avyakta avyakta is also the name of uh, god as in sri lalita sagastra nama so here the western ideology as well as the pseudo rationalism they created a narrative telling that we considered everything as maya so we didn't study the world we study we didn't study the universe we always thought of human miseries as a kind of a maya illusion so we ignored them it is not true next what you see is meghandar meghandar became enlightened when he was just two and he gave a very wonderful explanation of advaita his advaita was called shiva advaita now you whenever you are taught when you are whenever you are told about advaita you always think of the same gold becoming different ornaments but the gold is the same that is the advaita you talk about but meghanda told that advaita is something different here you have think of the sunlight this is what the example he gives think of the sunlight the sunlight comes into your cornea and into your nervous system and with the physiological apparatus it operates and you have your own life form your own life force that also operates with it at particular point the light from the sun your own vital processes your own cognitive apparatus they all become one to create an experience qualia the modern consciousness researchers call it qualia at that particular qualia everything becomes non dual at that particular qualia your physical light your physiological apparatus your cognitive apparatus they all become non dual that point is the point of advaita so think about it you have somebody like meghandar take any textbook in tamil nadu you have a chapter on meghandar no why you have here an example you have a template has been given to you to study consciousness a template has been given to you just three or four days before in scientific american there was an article about vision and they were talking about the vision is more psychological than physical and here you have a template i am not telling that meghandar knew 
exactly the rods cones cornea etc etc of the the, the visual uh, apparatus that we have inside our brain no he did he didn't know all those things but he gave a philosophical template the template that was more holistic so here you have a holistic rationalism in india we have developed this holistic rationalism now we come to the pseudo rationalism can we go to the next slide please now we come to pseudo rationalism what is pseudo rationalism a very good demonstration of pseudo rationalism was given by tamil nadu press very recently when bjp leader annamali ji when he told that you are jumping like monkeys then they told that you have called to us as monkeys okay the point is when you tell that someone is a great very good in mathematics in tamil nadu you have a common term kanakla puli and then the pseudo rationalist would ask you then why he is not having four legs so that is pseudo rationalism for you pseudo rationalism is taking literally the meaning in a very foolish way to but there is a venom in it that is what you have to understand there is venom the venom is this that you want to make your opponent look like an idiot the next thing is who is your opponent your opponent is your own person your own brother the difference between anti semitism and this dravidianism is that in anti semitism the non jews hated the jews in dravidianism our own brothers are made to hate our own cultural self which is more dangerous which is actually can lead to genocide today if in tamil nadu there is no genocide it is because it is mainly because of the cultural strength of india the cultural strength of sanadana dharma even a dravidianist knows when he has to do ayush komam who which community he needs he knows that that is why the genocide is not happening at the same time we cannot take this for granted this cultural ties are holding or i would say the punya bala of our ancestors are holding us but we also have to act we also have to reinforce this aspects otherwise we are going to be in big trouble like in rwanda or in sri lanka we are going to be in trouble so we will go to the next one here is an example a very perfect example i am giving you of pseudo rationalism and holistic rationalism this here you see can you see uh, here you can see the poster made by dravida kalagam when astronauts landed on the moon so they showed this poster telling that in the head of shiva is the crescent moon and the astronauts have landed on that itself so the american astronaut had put his feet on the head of shiva now this is an example for pseudo rationalism because he takes the dance of shiva as literal as any of our great saints have they told that this dance is literal that actual moon is on the head of shiva has any of us told us we will come to that later but just think about this here i have three examples one is by Ilya Prigogine Ilya Prigogine was a Nobel laureate he was working on the dynamics of molecules he wanted to publish a book on thermodynamics the book is on thermodynamics the book is was not on nataraja the book is was not on indian culture it was on thermodynamics and what is the most beautiful dynamic image of that particular domain that he was researching he got it was shiva's nataraja and you have another one ecologist he was studying the ecological aspects and he saw shiva as the great metaphor for ecological dynamics and you have fricho capra who was studying the particles the type the dynamics of the subatomic particles and he also came up with the dance of shiva as the metaphor think about it again i am telling you this is something that we have to be very careful we cannot allow pseudo science to enter this this does not mean that atoms are dancing like shiva or anything it does not mean that our ancestors knew about electron protons or quarks or string theory it is not that it is that the dance of shiva is always evolving with the enlargement of the human knowledge they have created a beautiful form like this for us and what do we do what do we do we demean it with this kind of posters 
and then it is from this poster it is just a couple of uh, steps that you smuggle out nataraja icons and you sell it to the idol smugglers right. so this is about what actually pseudo rationalism is now we move to the next one can we go first yeah here we see a very good example of what actually the hindu rationalism is everybody knows this particular uh, verse by thirumula muppuram satanan enbargal moodargal muppuram avadu mummala karyam right so when shiva destroyed the three tripuras it did not mean that he destroyed them literally thirumula says us that the three tripuras they actually symbolize the three inner pollutants the ego karma maya so here you have your temple this is a very interesting thing because throughout the world the rational is they consider their religious text as poetry for example genesis they consider it as poetry the rationalists will consider it as poetry the fundamentalists will take the literal meaning in india it is the reverse here we take the symbolic and the poetic and the mystical meaning the so called rationalists take the direct meaning so here this is a perfect example for pseudo rationalism to go to the next actually now we are coming to the social justice part we have always been told that this particular nation is filled with the social inequalities every society in the world has been filled with the social inequalities in every society you have birth based social discrimination in every society you have birth based social exclusion but it is only in the hindu society throughout the history this social discriminations and social exclusions have been questioned so here i give you two examples one is sri mahabhakta vijayam it was published by lifco it is a very old text it was published by lifco and the the, the introduction was written by uh, namakkal kavinya so you can imagine it was older than the dravidian movement actually this particular text and the sri mukam was given by kanchi kamagodi uh, bida dipati sri jayendra saraswati swami gar and in this text what when you go inside you will find that there are seers sages from every community and this was the basis of a great revolutionary in when he studied sri mahabhakta vijayam he became a social revolutionary we will come to that and that name would not even have registered in the mind of people because we will now go through fast the next scene you are seeing you have umabadi sivacharya and his guru when they were walking just to remove the concept of caste the guru went no the previous one please yeah the guru went to the street of the weavers the weavers would be having a lot of starch you know the form of rice the starch for the for the cloth so the guru goes and asks for that and he gets it and he says this is shiva prasadam and umavadi shivacharya who was a great learned brahmin he got that from the guru flowing from his hand and he called it the guru prasadam thus the concept of social aristocracy or the concept of social supremacy was been challenged continuously by sanatana dharma it was not challenged by the colonial people it was challenged by sanatana dharma we'll go to the next one so i told you about sri mahabhakta vijayam this mahabhakta vijayam inspired swami sahajananda to fight for the rights of the scheduled communities and who was his guru who gave him the name swami sahajananda he was karapatra sivaprakasa swami gal just think about this in those days in those days karapatra swami gal made a scheduled community person a guru and told that this this boy at that time he was a boy he told that this boy is equal to shankaracharya himself that was the greatness and how many of us even remember swami sahajananda more importantly how many of us remember shiva prakasa karapatra swami gal his samadhi is there in vyasarpadi it is a place of great social spiritual renaissance because there he gave sanyasa to swami sahajananda and one of the disciples of karapatra swami gal he belonged to a nayakar or naidu community i have forgotten so he came to the karapatra swami gal and said uh, he wrote a letter and gave to him the letter he told to swami i cannot tell this with my words so i am writing this letter if you are giving uh, sanyasa to this uh, scheduled community boy i will have to kill you i will poison you so you should not give 
so that was the kind of uh, caste stratification under the colonial rule and that was challenged by what by the advaita by advaita of uh, karapatra swamigal karapatra swamigal made the icon of adi shankara and took it on a nagarvalam throughout vyasar body at that time these places should be honored indaranleyathurai is not going to honor it dravidian movement is not going to honor it we have to we the people of hindu sangathan we have to honor these people we will go to the next one fast and next the great people that we have to talk about this is 2022 in december 12 you are going to have 150th birth anniversary of dharmavir munje munje along with mc raja he created the pact that would allow reservations for the scheduled community at the same time would not create separate electorates so that the british divide and rule policy would work and these are the great people who worked this plan this based on this plan only later ambedkar gandhi pact was created we we'll go to the next one yeah go to the next and these two people we have to remember very very importantly one is harbilas sharda who is on the left and that is jayakar the, the the pseudo social justice movement always talks about one particular thing that they were the people who were the forefront of women liberation today we have got a lot of women here they all who they are presence here not to eva ramasami not to the dravidians but to this person harbila sarda because he was the one who stopped child marriage and he wrote a book the name of the book is supremacy of hindu civilization so you have a hindutvite who actually bought the sarda act which liberated the women then you have jayakar jayakar was the person who first asked for reservation for scheduled community in pol- police pools he was a hindu mahasabha president we we'll go to the next fast this 2023 is the 100th year of a great resolution by sitaram kevet keshav bole so what did he do in 1923 a resolution was passed in bombay municipal bombay legislative assembly it recognized the right of scheduled communities to use public water bodies public roads public parks and the public spaces at large this was responsible for the magat satyagraha this was responsible for magat satyagraha and the person who passed it sk bone who is sitting on the lap of dr ambedkar remember this person he was the provincial head of bombay hindu mahasabha and he met dr ambedkar when he was going to the constituent assembly and told you should announce saffron flag as the national flag of india that was the person who brought the resolution that created magat satyagraha so just think about it when somebody tells you that they won the social justice we have to tell that we are the persons who created the social justice movement in this nation social justice actually was its existence today as it is today in a positive way to hindutva and not to the dravidians the dravidians are the pseudo social reformers because just i they you have to ask them this question when harbila sharda and dr ambedkar united harbila sharda a hindutva dr ambedkar united they were fighting for sharda act what was eva ramasamy nayakar doing i think the answer is unspeakable so i won't tell that answer okay now we'll go to the last one okay yeah the same way i want to remember you another one aspect babu jagjeevan rao there was a book written about uh, bjp by one vinay sitapati he is a professor of kalinga university ashoka university or kalinga university ashoka university so you should, you would be knowing typical liberal person and he has brought out an important thing that is when the janata government was there do you know who was the choice of rss and jansan to become the prime minister of india it was babu jagjeevan rao had rss and jansan then became bjp had they had their way india would have got its first scheduled community prime minister babu jagjeevan rao when babu jagjeevan rao wanted to pass a resolution against untouchability when he was young at hindu mahasabha it was pandit madan mohan malaviya who stood and supported him against the orthodoxy in the same way you have suraj ban who was the national chairman of scheduled community he was a rss pracharak 
and it was during his time that he understood what was the problem in rural India. He told that lands should be given to the scheduled community and he took action also. So in all this, what you are seeing is that we have contributed solidly to both rationalism, holistic rationalism and true social reforms, true social justice. Never let the Dravidian movement, the Dravidian is cheat people with their lies again. Because I want to end this with one, one very strong statement. One very strong statement for the BJP people here. It is this. Every vote in this battle, it has civilizational consequences. A vote for BJP is a vote for Indian civilization and Indian nation. A vote against BJP, a vote against BJP is a visa we are personally signing to allow terrorists to enter India and to kill our children. We have to understand that. With this, I finish my talk. Thank you very much. Vande Madhuram Jai Hind.